Hey everyone, welcome back to Static Pharmacology here on EMTV. I'll be giving you a patient care scenario, and your goal is to develop a treatment plan that emphasizes pharmacological management. For an extra challenge, I'll be putting a one minute timer on the bottom of the screen. When the time is up, we'll do a scenario walkthrough, and I'll give you my treatment. Enjoy the card, and good luck. Three, two, one. So clearly this scenario presents you with a critically ill patient. Let's go ahead and take a look at it in a little bit closer detail. You're dispatched to a local office building for a 28-year-old female complaining of dizziness and severe abdominal pain. She is alert and oriented and reports a sudden onset of left lower abdominal pain beginning about 20 minutes ago. She denies any trauma, denies any medical history, and reports the pain radiates into her pelvis. She reports her last menstrual period was seven weeks ago and denies any vaginal bleeding. Physical assessment reveals cool, diaphoretic skin and a weak peripheral pulse. You obtain the following vital signs. Blood pressure 76 over 42, heart rate 125, respiratory rate 26, SpO2 94% on room air, and a blood sugar of 99. So the scenario I've presented for you goes beyond a typical acute abdominal pain call. What's actually occurring here is something much more significant than typical GI distress. Based on your patient's vital signs and their presentation, their skin condition, your patient is clearly going into shock. With the sudden onset of severe abdominal pain and the shocky presentation, we worry about a few potential causes. Now there is one fact in the scenario here that would point me away from things like appendicitis and towards something more significant. If you remember, the patient mentioned that her last menstrual period was seven weeks ago. This makes me immediately concerned that this could be something like an ectopic pregnancy. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this, an ectopic pregnancy is when a fertilized egg implants somewhere besides the uterine wall. Most of the time, these pregnancies will fail on their own or spontaneously miscarriage because of the lack of available blood supply for the developing embryo. Now, in normal cases, Fertilization of the egg occurs within the ampulla of the fallopian tube, and generally the fertilized egg will then travel downward and implant in the uterine wall. In certain rare cases, implantation of this fertilized egg occurs within the fallopian tubes themselves. Now because of the available lack of blood supply, again, generally these will spontaneously miscarry. However, it is possible for enough blood supply to exist here that embryonic development continues. The worst case scenario is when development continues within the fallopian tube, causing it to swell, and then eventually to rupture. And this may or may not present with vaginal bleeding. Ruptured ectopic pregnancies can occur anywhere from 6 to 14 weeks after the date of the last menstrual period. And as this scenario clearly demonstrates a person who is entering shock due to their presentation and their vital signs, we can assume that a ruptured ectopic pregnancy has occurred. This is less likely to be an acute appendicitis due to its orientation, pain being on the left side versus the right side where the appendix normally is. And after an appendix ruptures, there's actually very little pain until the patient becomes septic. Now that we've kind of got an understanding of what a ruptured ectopic pregnancy is, let's go ahead and take a look at the treatment.
Now, just like with all my other cards, treatment for this person is going to begin by regurgitating the mantra, scene safe, BSI, IV O2 monitor. Now, definitive treatment for this patient is going to involve surgery. Everything that we do pre-hospitally or even in the acute care environment is simply going to be allowing them time to get to that operating room. For this patient, fluid replacement here is key. So I'll administer IV fluids, but only enough to maintain peripheral pulses. This concept is known as permissive hypotension. We're not shooting for a number here. We're giving them enough volume to actually be able to feel a pulse in a peripheral spot like the radial artery. Flooding them with fluid can make things much, much worse. As this patient is in a fair amount of pain, we'll also then consider analgesics. Fentanyl is a good choice here. 25 to 50 microgram boluses given IV, but because there is still some potential for this patient to become more hypotensive with opioid administration, ketamine is another valid choice of pain medication. Analgesic ketamine dosing is usually 0.3 to 0.5 milligrams per kilogram, given slowly over about 10 minutes. To maintain adequate blood pressures, after fluid resuscitation, we could then consider the administration of vasopressors. Dopamine or norepinephrine are excellent choices here. Dopamine is going to be given at 2 to 10 micrograms per kilogram per minute, and norepinephrine is dosed at 0.1 to 0.5 micrograms per kilogram per minute. Both of these are IV infusions that can be titrated to effect. TXA administration here is also something to consider. However, generally the administration of TXA is reserved for signs of external hemorrhage, and there's not a lot of data that supports the administration of it for something like this. Ideal fluid replacement though for this individual is going to be whole blood. But because your protocols may limit the use of whole blood to external hemorrhages, this patient may not be a candidate. And then of course, last but not least, rapid transport. And that's it. If you like this video, please make sure to head over to my YouTube page for more. And be sure to check out my other playlists, static cardiology, as well as my pro tips. Until I see you next, keep washing your hands, stay safe, and have a good rest of your night.